things first interesting news somewhat surprising news courtesy of mixmag concerning the great and the legendary glastonbury festival it looks like glastonbury have to put their prices up for next year and i guess for subsequent years because i'm assuming they're probably not getting enough people through the gates in general um maybe demand has gone sky high and they want to capitalize on it maybe the cost of production is even more than it was prior especially now with brexit especially now in the post-pandemic world whatever's happened they've hiked up the price and people on the internet especially on social media are not happy because if you know anything about glastonbury you know glastonbury is a very um, unique sort of UK festival because it's quite family orientated. Um, there's a lot of people there who have kind of gone there since they were little children all the way up to the adult years. The people that go there with friends, it's a yearly tradition. Um, and it's just something that people kind of do a lot here in the UK, like on a consistent basis, that people are kind of tied in and kind of feel like they're part of the Glastonbury family. And the owners or the founders, the people that kind of do Glastonbury Festival are also very personable. They communicate a lot on social media. It feels like you're supporting somebody that you know. It's got a very personal kind of... Um, real person vibe you know a lot of festivals are just faceless and it's just a brand sex or another brand glastonbury actually feels like somebody's kind of doing it off in the back of a fucking beer mat you know somewhere in their kitchen when you know most likely it is a big organization they've got loads of employees it's a serious business but it does have that kind of diy hands-on feel so when people see these kind of price increases when company like that it kind of comes across a bit weird but you know i'm i'm not flipping naive enough to expect these places to never put their prices up especially with the changing world that we're living in at the moment so i'm sure there's some meaning and some kind of rationale behind it but again if you're a punter and you're seeing it go up 26 percent and you're already squeezing your belt energy prices are where they are at the moment you're flipping weekly shop like mine has gone up to to justify spending an extra what 50 60 quid on a ticket to go to glastonbury probably isn't it so we continue it says the price of a Glastonbury ticket has risen by 26% concerning many avid um, uh, concerning sorry, many avid festival goers with Emily Evis blaming challenging times for the increase. Challenging times is a bit vague, Emily. You've got to come with some more stuff though. You've got to like really break it down for people. That's what I think places should do. Don't get me wrong. It's not their business to, but maybe to kind of really give them some explanation and to maybe have people rally behind you, maybe breaking it down to the minutia and saying, hey, this is why we have to increase this thing that we bought, you know, a few years ago has now gone up this way and we need to obviously account for that increase because money isn't coming out the things that we're making whatever it may be just break it down a little bit more a little bit more itemized people maybe would have some more sympathy it continues tickets from general sale in 2020 had been priced at 265 pounds with a five pound booking fee with a minor rise to 280 due to inflation when the event hit resale in 2022 but for the 2023 edition tickets will cost £335 plus a £5 booking fee. That's pretty insane. They even have to keep the booking fee on there because they need it. Do you know what I mean? That's, I'm guessing the processing fee. I'm not sure how booking fees actually work. If it's a processing fee for the platform that you're, that you're hosting the ticket sale on, because I'm assuming most of these places, you use the already services built in. They kind of like, like, like an RA or like a DICE. They've got their system already in place and then you kind of build on top of that. So you have to use their service or malarkey. So obviously that booking fee goes to that and the processing fee, blah, blah, blah. I'm not sure, probably, yeah, whatever else. But they have to keep the... So they, they're putting it up to free five, free, free five and they're still keeping the booking fee. Festival girls have taken to social media to share concerns over the hike with a Twitter user saying, I love Glastonbury, but for many people, this is just unfamable at this time. It is unfamable at this time, but this is the only time they could do it and justify it because we're going through what we're going through. It's a weird time we're living in an economy, right? Like everyone's losing money. Everyone's bills are getting you know, more, or are getting more, are getting higher. Everyone's expenses are maybe going down to, to accommodate for the bills going up. But if you sell something, you kind of have to sell it for a bit more to account for what you're having to pay for in terms of your day to day. It's just what it is, isn't it? So it's a weird, it's a, it's a bit of a quagmire. It's a bit of a strange position to be in, but it does make some sense if you kind of take your emotion and your love for the festival and you kind of take a bit of a bird's eye view from it and kind of look at it from the outside in. It does make sense why they'd want to raise it now as opposed to any other time in like a boom time. It doesn't really make more sense. But the funny thing for me that really makes me laugh about this whole thing, if I'm not mistaken, let me just do a quick Google. But let me see, Primavera ticket prices. This is why for me, 
UK festivals are always going to be second fiddle to European festivals, just for me personally. I know some of you guys may disagree and may think I'm talking at my ass, but for me personally, I think UK festivals are grossly overrated. I haven't been to um, Glastonbury myself. I've heard some really good things. I know some people within my social group um, who have gone to Glastonbury and have only good things to say about the place. I love that it's got this community of people who still communicate with each other and still hang out with each other and are friends and have developed into being you know, close closer than family members they go to each other's weddings and stuff and baby showers and all that stuff and it's clearly fostered a really close-knit community that hang out even outside of the festival that's a pretty much of a good sign of a good festival similar to like a good workplace if you have people that are going on holiday together or attending each other's weddings it shows that you have a flipping good community there right you have a good ambiance um you, you don't have a high turnover all that stuff but all that said and done all of that said and done Let's not lie and say UK festivals are value for money because they're not. They're not value for money. A good example being this on the screen, Primavera Sound. I've been to Primavera Sound now, what? We've been there, I think it's two times, not three. I think it might be two or three, I'm not too sure. But either way, me and my friend went to Primavera Festival for the first time together and we absolutely loved it. And imagine this is the first sort of holiday festival thing that we're going with together, alone and stuff. So you're, you're you know, you, you're not too sure if this is going to be a test of your friendship, but that's going to not work. The city's great for that kind of vibe. We stayed, and we did two experiences. We stayed in a hotel first. And I think, yeah, we went twice. We stayed in a hotel before, and then we stayed in an Airbnb, and both experiences were absolutely phenomenal. And the festival itself is great. It maybe has one of the best lineups of any festival I've ever seen in my entire life, right? If I put this off the screen now and say, pre my Vera Sound um, Barcelona uh, lineup right for 2022, and I get that on the screen, and then we try to um, understand why I think UK festivals are really are overrated in terms of what they offer you, especially in terms of price. Look at look, and this is not even including festivals that you might go to like in like places like i don't know like in portugal or like smaller ones in places like copenhagen or croatia or other parts of central europe or maybe a festival you might go to in central america south america there's so much value for money out there that it really is a disservice for you to only attend flipping what's it face um uk festivals so this is a okay let me get this on the screen actually this is a copy image address let's put it on a new tab and let's get this line up, right? So we can see who played. This is from last year, right? Primavera Sound. Why is it not loading? Come on, get up here. This is from last year, right? And look how amazing this lineup is already. And this already shows you I think the value for money is insane. I already saw the price on here for next year's Primavera Sound Festival. Um, from the 1st to the 3rd, you've got... Is that it? 1st to the 3rd. Why does that look look like it's, it's, it's a shorter festival? Is that Barcelona? Primavera Sound, Barcelona. Is that the one, right? Primavera Sound, Primavera Sound, Primavera Sound. Hmm, why does it seem so short the days? Or maybe kids ask you to audition from okay, I don't know. It's usually five days, but it doesn't matter. Regardless. The tickets for Primavera Sound Festival, basic ticket, 260 euros. 260 euros. They've got a ticket here with an installment plan that's only five euros more than the regular ticket. So I'm assuming they're gonna break up into maybe one to was it how many installments? Maybe two to three, maybe four, I'm not too sure. A VIP full festival ticket is 480 euros and then you've got a full festival ticket what's this one there on the right um then you've got here whoops then you've got here a full ticket to barcelona and madrid uh primavera sound for that amount absolutely crazy is do they mean they're splitting it so they're having a festival in barcelona and in madrid is that is that what they're basically trying to say that's pretty sick so I guess they're going to split the weekend. So instead of having two weekends in Barcelona, one weekend's going to be in Barcelona and one weekend's going to be in fucking Madrid. So one, yeah, the, the Barcelona one's from the 1st to the 3rd and then the Madrid one's from the 8th to the 10th, it looks like. Pretty, pretty amazing. But regardless, the lineup from last year, look at what you're getting for your money, right? 260 euros. Look who's playing. Look, look at the bang for your buck that you're getting. Um, on the first day, on the first day, first weekend, headlining, Massive Attack Pavement Taming Parlor. Second day, Beck, The National, The Strokes. Fourth, third day, Gorillaz, Georgia Smith, Nick Cave, and Tyler Creator. Not, not including all the amazing artists underneath, right? Not including all of them. I see Flipping, Beach House, Callum Palachek, DJ Harvey, for goodness sake, right? Absolutely incredible. Then on the second weekend, if you didn't like that one, headliners, 
Dua Lipa, Gorillaz, Interpol, Tyler the Creator on the first day. Second day, Lord, Massive Attack, The Strokes. The third day on the second weekend, Georgia Smith, Megan Thee Stallion, Phoenix, Tame Impala, Yeah, Yeah, Yeahs. Are you nuts? That's supreme value for money. Now, don't get me wrong. Gas and Brie also has good lineups, but for 260 or now 335 pounds, just to be in a small village somewhere in the UK where, and, you know, it's, it's good because you can basically take as many, you know, as much booze and drugs as you want with you to a certain extent. I get that, Malarkey, and it's not far from where you actually live. You have to get on a plane when you think, fair enough, but I'd much rather go to a sunnier climate, be able to eat some tapas, be able to get a bit of a tan, meet some cool and interesting people, have a good time, have a boogie, enjoy myself, um, listen to some good music especially because Primavera also they book a lot of people that I necessarily wouldn't listen to so go to some stages and listen to people that I wouldn't check out hear them play live fall in love with them and want to stream and buy all their music and buy their merch much rather do that but anyway we continue another user said that get that glass and breeze a huge endeavor and that costs everything are rising and that the festival industry as a whole is struggling after covid but with the ticket prices going up to 340 pound per person before food travel and drink it's clear the festival is now almost exclusively for the wealthy which is what's happened for the most part i think i said it to you guys already i watched this video right and this is a good example this is a good reason to get this video back up here i was watching this video of kind of music guys playing that fucking burning man and it really blew my mind because again i have a small social group of people online who i know who go to burning man and speak very highly of it right and they flip and do loads of posts online and they've got little community online that exists there same with goes to Gastonbury. so and then also because i was obsessed with startups um i also kind of knew uh, pre sorry. Um, I also knew Burning Man to be something that a lot of people within that kind of sex self actualization startup VC adjacent kind of world to be a fan of, right? And they always spoke very, very highly of it in terms of its transformative effects, in terms of it being a place where you can meet different people, um, in, in terms of it being a place where you can maybe open your horizon, try different drugs, um, just let go of all your, you know, um, worldly things that you do on the outside, no phone because there's no network over it and all that good stuff. All that things was really something I've heard of a lot when it comes to Burning Man. But now, suddenly Burning Man has turned into just another stop on the influencer world tour you know how you have these things like paris fashion week you have um you have uh oh, what's that thing called you have the flipping uh, freeze art fair you have festival season in general you have maybe places like dc 10 there's a few places on online where they kind of meet they kind of go down the roller decks of these kind of influencer world tour type events and now burning man has just turned into one of those type of things so it wouldn't surprise me if they have flipping places there that are flipping sponsored by certain brands and whatnot and all this other nonsense so let me just get this actually i've got, I've got my headphones on so i can actually hear what these guys are saying but it's actually quite interesting because i saw this clip of kind of music playing on fucking burning man and it was quite interesting to see that it essentially looked like tomorrowland it looks very commercial. And again, I don't, I don't have a problem with Tomorrowland. I like big festivals. I like big productions. I like the fact that there is this kind of segment in dance music that exists where if you have some money and you're a baller and you want to have a bit of VIP treatment and you want to go to a rave but you don't want to be slugging it with all us normies down there whilst we're doing our bumps of care, you can kind of sit in your own little um, section. You can sit in this elevated thing where you're looking down upon us like we're, like we're not fucking worthy. I love all that stuff. I think all that stuff is fucking amazing. But, but... But there's no denying that the DIY rough around the edges image of Burning Man that once existed has completely gone. Just take a look at this flipping video of Kind of Music and me, Rampa and Adam Port playing at Burning Man earlier on. The fact that they have this streamed and it's video recorded and stuff just shows you how things have changed. But yeah, you you get the point, right? Loads of um, loads of normie looking whites enjoying themselves, dancing around, um, swaying from left to right, like they would be at any other festival that exists, right? So no real difference in that regard. But it is quite interesting to see how Caucasian it is, number one, which is obviously understandable, but also how 
it looks like any other regular festival. If you didn't recognize the dusty decks from the sand kicking up all over the place in that flipping Nevada desert, you wouldn't really know it was Burning Man. You would just think it's any other, you think it's flipping adult Coachella or something. But it's just what it's, that's effectively what it's turned into. And if you're aware of Burning Man, you'll know they have a lot of installment plans and a lot of systems in place to allow people who don't have a lot of money to go there. But still, essentially, you're going to need to find, your, find a way to get to the Nevada desert somehow. You're going to need to find a way to kind of get yourself to the location somehow so it's still going to cost you some amount of money no amount of kind of scrimping and saving is going to make you go there for fucking 200 dollars it's not going to happen so it's always been kind of for the wealthy and it's interesting to see a festival like glastonbury which is i thought something that a lot of people would say is a bit more grassroots has kind of gone that way unfortunately co-organizers emily avis responded to an announcement on twitter she said as following we have tried very hard to minimize the increase in the prices of the ticket but we're facing enormous rises in the cost of running this vast show whilst recovering from the huge financial impact of two years without festival because of covid so she's basically saying not being able to run a business for two years has made it so they have to pull up the price next year which makes a lot of sense because i remember someone saying i forgot who it was but maybe someone that does a really big festival said no festival actually makes money or profit or i, I forgot which one is someone said something like that like like they don't actually make money they just break even but the whole point of it is to get a lot of brand and sponsorship and whatnot to kind of fund other things that you want to do or to kind of allow yourself to give yourself a platform so you can have maybe a voice in the industry that you're trying to break into, wherever it may be. That's basically what you're doing it as. So you can imagine a lot of these festivals, especially here in the UK, they're breaking even every year. But because they're providing such good times for people, they're launching careers, they're introducing flipping fans to new artists they would never have seen. They're just maybe adding to the local flipping economy. They're providing a fun place for their friends to come and hang out. Whatever it may be, it's going to give you some sense of... Um, um, it's going to give you some sense of willingness to go out and do it again next year because it's so much fun, even though you're not making that money because of all the other things that are coming on top of it. But if you have two years of not making absolutely anything, but then you're still having to pay for stuff in the background, because I'm assuming that's what happens. I don't think those people that, you know, hire out equipment or who do the production or wherever else that work at festivals were just not billing people. They had their own bills to pay also. So you're also having to pay that stuff whilst you're not kind of ready to restart, whilst you have no idea where when you're going to be able to restart it must be really 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 a confusing time so it kind of makes sense why they're putting it up but again like i said i would have never to be fair i would have been tempted before to have paid the price that they had prior which was what the prior price was 280 maybe would have tempted me but still the fact that i've got a taste of primavera and the fact that i go on my techno tourism jaunts quite often i probably would have never followed through but now it's free free five get that get the f out of here with a five pound booking fee I don't care what happened in the world. I'm not going. But it continues. The £50 deposit on ticket sales in November will be the same as ever with the balance not due until April. So she's basically saying, hey, you're only going to pay 50 now. Relax. You're going to pay the, the, the rest of it, the whatever, or the 280 or whatever else is left <laughs> sometime in April. God damn it. And as always, there will be opportunities for many thousands of people to come as volunteers or as part of the crew. So if you want to rave, you have to work for free or try and get a job there. <laughs> It is incredibly challenging times. We want to continue to bring you the best show in the world and provide our charities with funds which are more vital than ever. And we are always and hugely appreciative of our ongoing support. According to the Guardian, 200, the 2023 um, ticket for Reading and Leeds Festival is cheaper than the 2022 ticket. However, Green Man and End of the Road have also increased their prices. So the Red, Red, Reading and Leeds kind of have to because every year some headliner flipping drops out. And in general, it's full of flipping ketted up peeled up 18 and 19 year olds unless you're a flipping crystalia you probably shouldn't be going there anyway so it makes sense why they're going to put their tickets down so that normal people who probably would never go to reading and Leeds because they know it's full of flipping kids who lie about their age would end up going there but glastonbury is a whole different affair the what i'm thinking though what be, might be interesting at the back of this what i'm thinking i just thought about this now Maybe this might mean next year we'll see an increase in all those videos people post of them flipping, sneaking into Glastonbury. You know, there's that famous guy, did one recently, that was really cool, where he essentially found like an underpass in some lake or some river thing underneath a gate that was looked that looked really gnarly. I was like, look, you have to really like festivals to be willing to crawl in literal muck to watch flipping, I don't know who's going to be playing. What's his fucking name? 
Professor Green sing some of his best hits or something. You have you have to be kidding me if you think I'm going to go and do that. But big up everyone that did do it. But I wonder if we're going to see a lot more of that happening. Obviously on an official side of things, that like content creation, but also people just saying, you know what, I don't care. I'm going to go to the festival and they're just jumping and for the sake of it. They're not even jumping because they want to get into the festival. They're jumping because, fuck it, just going to jump in for the clout. And also people jumping because they literally have no money. But I equate going to the festival with no money and attempting to jump it, especially one that's like outside of, the, of fucking London or it's not already near you live and you have to camp there. I equate that the same as those psycho girls that go to restaurants and try to get sugar daddy to pay for their meals. There's been a few of them on social media who've been posting these things where they're, they're like eating and they're fucking turning their head every two minutes like they're fucking Xavi at his peak at Barcelona watching their shoulders to see if they can catch the eye of some bloody rich guy so you can pay for their bloody dinner. That is that that is meant you have some you have some mental issues. That is that that is a cry for help. That is a red flag if a girl's going to a restaurant and you know and risking the embarrassment and the shame of not having money to pay so that she can get some old guy to pay for a meal. You're insane. In the same way going to Glastonbury with a backpack full of fucking you know ketamine and straws and cups and some boxes and some socks and whatnot and some wet wipes with no idea of how you're gonna get in but hoping you're gonna jump over the gate. You have something wrong with you. But I'm still gonna watch your content. I'm going to click like and I'm going to click subscribe. <laughs> you know what I mean? I might even leave you a comment as well if it's good. I might even give you a super thanks if I like the content. So keep doing your things, especially you crazy white boys out there. I want to see that thing rag one. But again, thoughts and feelings go out to everybody that's going to be suffering through this price hike because that is legitimately wild to pay £335 to go to Glastonbury when you could pay 260 euros to go to barcelona not including the flights not including the accommodation i know but still to go see some of the best bands in the world in one of the best cities in the world doesn't make any sense in my opinion but again what do i know